there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Coaster Chal, YouTube channel Doncaster Born, but built for theme park news. And today is a brand new theme park predictions video. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting a lot of suggestions for this theme park prediction series. So it's really exciting that you guys are really truly involved with this series in particular. Now today's prediction video is the next five years at Thorpe. Park. Now, I've got some interesting predictions that I want to share with you. Uh, we're going to be looking back over the last decade at Thorpe Park, having a look at the pattern, see if we can pick out any patterns whatsoever, any new attractions, any new other developments and experiences. I'm going to pick them all out. Now, before we get started, please give this video a like if you've loved it. Please subscribe to the channel. Please click the notification bell. Give it a ring so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share the channel with your friends, your family, and on social media. Where, you know, we're, we're getting closer and closer to 1,600 subscribers. We're on the road to 2,000. So when we get on to 2,000 subscribers, that'll be our next Q&A video. So drop a question if you've got a question for that Q&A video. Use the hashtag question before or after your question. And for now, guys, let's get into this video. So shout outs first of all go to the LMBN team. Brian Galeas, and also a shout out for the person who requested this video, B Boy JD10. Massive shout out to all of you guys. If you want to shout out our next video, comment down below. So let's have a look at the last decade at Thorpe Park Resort. That is the part we're focusing on in this prediction video. Thorpe Park predictions, next five years at Thorpe Park. Let's have a look at the last decade at the park. So. Going all the way back to this time 10 years ago in 2010, when the park introduced, at the time, the year-round, but it reduced to just Fright Nights, Scare Maze. It was Saw Alive, it was the supporting attraction, the second phase of the Saw Island, as it was known back then, uh, when Saw the Ride first opened in 2009, so the end of the previous decade before the last one, uh, which is quite confusing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Saw Alive, which was a year-round horror maze, became a... Fright Fest edition and of course it was only last season when it was the first one without Saw Alive and we kind of knew from then that Saw Alive wasn't coming back. In 2011, replacing the old Octopus Gardens children's area that did look a bit dated and I hadn't done Thor Pop till 2016 for the first time. So I looked at old pictures of the Octopus Gardens at the time before it closed and you know it was very run down so it was about time it needed to go. And it did. The old Octopus Gardens area was removed and replacing it was a relocated ride from the old Cypress Gardens part that was set to be turned into Legoland, Florida. Storm Surge opened in 2011 at the park and then it was just a matter of time. Saving up for 2012, the LC12 construction teasing began and it was introduced. It was a B&M wing rider or wing coaster should we say. The Swarm opened in 2012. It was a B&M wing coaster, but some people called it a wing rider back then as well. Now, in 2013, they made another adjustment to the Swarm by adding the last two rows backwards. Uh, and as well as that, they introduced some temporary accommodation at the park called the Crash Pads, presented by a company called Snoozebox. And they also rethemed X No Way Out from that dark, sinister, world's first backward roller coaster theme into just X, no X, no I out, just X, which was a nightclub re theme. So the trains faced forwards, it was a normal indoor family thrill roller coaster with no inversions, and it had the brand new nightclub theme, which, from what I've heard, is very, very good. I've never, uh, to be fair, I've never actually done X. I've never done uh, like the nightclub theme, or the dark sinister theme, or the Walking Dead the Ride theme. So, you know, I'm still yet to do that attraction at the park. But I've heard the nightclub theme is better than Walking Dead and the old theme. Some people like the old theme though, so fair enough. Um, in 2014, Angry Birds Land was introduced. Now, this was a section of the old Amity section where Detonator is. Uh, Time Voyages 4D, which was the old 4D cinema. That was SPNO for about a year or two uh, around there as well. They also introduced a brand new Dodgems area as part of the brand new theme into that section of Amity. So the King Pigs Wild Hog Dodgems uh, was introduced, as well as Angry Birds for the 4D Experience and Detonator Bombs Away, which is a re-theme of the Detonator Drop Tower attraction. In 2015, located in the old Asylum Studio 13 Scare Maze location was I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, which is a brand new maze attraction that included trials such as the Holy Moly Wall and the Celebrity Cyclone to be crowned King or Queen of the Jungle. <laughs> I'm trying to talk in a Geordie accent then, don't know why. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and of course in 2016 the next big project was introduced now towards the summer of 2015 construct and we already knew this before 2015 but construction was underway the chief ranger carousel and the arena that was the queue line for my bloody valentine that used to hold the spider-man stunt show those were all removed ready for project Whitechapel, i believe it was known and that would become Darren Brown's Ghost Train. That opened in 2016. Same year, the Swarm Backwards was removed. The, the last two rows were facing forwards again like a normal wing coaster. 2017, to accumulate the negatives surrounding Darren Brown's Ghost Train when it opened in 2016, they brought in a brand new extended storyline to make it Darren Brown's Ghost Train Rise of the Demons. They extended the storyline and they made loads of major changes to improve the ride. And of course, we all have our own opinions on it. Also in 2017, they introduced two new family rides relocated from Weymouth Sea Life in the Old Town section of the park. Lumber Jump and Timber Tugboat, which are a Zamperla Family Drop Tower and a Zamperla Rocking Tug. Like I said, both relocated from Weymouth Sea Life uh, in that area where Logger's Leap is. Of course, Logger's Leap was closed by this point, ready for redevelopment in quotations, uh, but we still haven't had that yet. Uh, in 2018, X was transformed again as part of the Year of the Walking Dead with the theme of The Walking Dead The Ride. Uh, in 2019, we had an event year uh, where we had GameFX in the uh, corporate hospitality tent near the entrance dome, uh, Bountzilla uh, opposite sort of the Zodiac Vortex area, um, which is like an inflatable bouncy castle. They did like an extreme version as well. Where they had like water, like water squirter guns, I guess. Uh, and of course, one of the other main things is, of course, Jungle Escape, which was an escape room attraction located on the site of I'm a Celebrity. In 2020, they continued with their experiences when this eventually does open, even if it, it might be relaunched for 2021. And that is, of course, Black Mirror Labyrinth. Now, this is a. a very hand like, like it's a walkthrough experience themed to black mirror replacing the old walking dead living nightmare maze and of course if and when these events get reintroduced next summer which i think i think it's, i think they're going to reintroduce these in 2021 since they haven't really been completed due to the covid 19 crisis they did plan to do two major events in the spring and the summer hyper spring and supercharged summer so they were planning to do that there was also mentioned on the website of the cosmic six challenge which i'm guessing is like a uh, a s sort of sci-fi rebrand of their six coaster challenge uh, I know they did the the feared six challenge at Fright Nights last year and it was sort of like rebranding that for the main season and along with the you know because like the, the theme of the whole events this year was like sci-fi futuristic to go along with the Black Mirror Labyrinth uh, attraction so it says the name Hyper Spring supercharged summer and the cosmic six challenge so it was a very event it very events based these last couple of years especially so there we go so that's looking at the last 10 years of thought park um as you can see in that list we've got one coaster <laughs> we've got a coaster refurbishment as well you know a, 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 well two two of the same coaster uh but in terms of new coasts we've got one uh and there is a coaster in this prediction video so stay tuned and you'll find out when and why and what 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 I think it could be. Uh, in terms of other new attractions, uh, a new land, uh, a couple of new walkthrough experiences, I'm a Celebrity, Black Mirror, um, a new dart ride, a major new dart ride with special effects, VR, some kind of ride system, a themed story behind it. Uh, There's some family rides. So it was a good mix. It was a, it was a balanced mixture. I think Thought Park in the past, and that this may be a controversial opinion looking back on it, but I think Thought Park in the past decade before that was very coming out of that family park, 100% family park base and heading into more of a thrill park with the additions of like Colossus, Nemesis Inferno, Stealth, Saw, Detonator, uh, all these types of thrill rides. And I think they were becoming more of a team park. So I think that Thought Park, even though they had had multiple divisional directors, I do believe they were going through a phase this last decade, these last 10 years. Uh, through the different directors to try and find their identity. It was a family park, then it became a thrill park, and then it's like a mixture of both now. Uh, so I think overall, this decade, even though there wasn't as many coasters, even though there was a ref two refurbishments of the same coaster in a few years between the two refurbishments, I think that a new wing coaster, and it is a very popular attraction, it didn't bring in the crowds that it, it maybe predicted, 
projected to, uh, but it still brought in a good amount of crowds. Uh, and Darren Brown's Ghost Train was kind of a flop. It's kind of a controversial investment, that one. Uh, and the improvements in 2017 made it better, but maybe didn't bring, still bring, didn't bring in the crowds they projected it to. So, uh, I think Darren Brown's Ghost Train kind of held Thought Park off of the major investments, but hopefully they will come back into that this decade with the major investments. Um, but now, let's have a look then in my predictions for the next five years at Thought Park Resort. So starting off then with 2021. Now 2021 I think will be uh, new shows and events. So I've highlighted three areas in particular. Uh, the beach, the I'm a Celebrity slash Jungle, well it's now Jungle Escape site and Bountzilla's site. Now Bountzilla in my personal opinion could very well stay. It could very well be um, Part of the relaunch of the events that were set to come this year in 2020, the Hyper Spring and the Supercharged Summer. I think they could introduce that as part of the Supercharged Summer or maybe even Hyper Spring or both. I think that the Jungle Escape will return, maybe with a, a slightly bigger story. Uh, or maybe they're going to change the whole system of the escape room, so maybe bring in some new uh, puzzles to escape each room to make it different than the previous season, maybe. So that could be a possibility. And I definitely think with Supercharged Summer, if they decide to reintroduce it in 2021, I do believe that the Amity Beach will, uh, well, the beach area will get used. I think Amity will as well with Tidal Wave and everything like that, but I do believe that the beach will be the main focus for Supercharged Summer because I think they'll really do some nice events on the beach, get a club. DJ in there, make it family related and also a teen section on the beach as well. Kind of like what they did with the Love Island Lates uh, sort of area. Um, have an area for families but also have the main area for the teens to club on, beach on, whatever they like to do at night and um, yeah I think that might be what they decide to do. I sound I sounded Australian then, what they decide to do? Uh, but uh, I think that could be the way forward and also of course reintroducing Black Mirror Labyrinth, which was going to be their new attraction this year, but I've got a feeling like Alton Towers, like Tornado Springs at Poulton's Park, like Flamingoland's Ten Looper, they'll, they'll reintroduce them in 2021 with the right measures in place. So moving in then to 2022, and I think we're going to see a couple of family or thrill rides. Now, I'm highlighting Zodiac and this grassland now you probably might not know where it is but you might see at the top right of the or the top left corner of the image a sort of section of lift hill and an aeroplane wing so you'll know where it is it's near the swarm it's opposite the swarm it's part of the swarm island uh, and me personally i would like to see um a zamperla hawk uh on that site so make so something like lumberjack at canada's wonderland uh, so it's your it's your swinging inverter ride. So it's nothing like submission at Alton Towers. It's not the old version of that, but it's the Zamperla Hawk. So it's kind of like it, kind of think of Pandemonium, but a brand new version. So it's it's a better version. It's a more modern version. I'd like to see that maybe. So you've got the Swarm main coaster, and then this like themed around a military device to help battle against the Swarm. So maybe theme it around like a grenade launcher, or theme it around a military weapon. Uh, maybe call it karma, you know, you know, theme it around a a secret military project, like a secret weapon to battle the swarm. No reference to Alton Towers. No reference to Alton Towers. Uh, but some kind of military weapon to battle against the swarm, and that's the theme of this flat ride. Zodiac has been highlighted because I think they could replace Zodiac with the Zamperla model, the biggest Zamperla endeavor in the world. I think a, an extension of the original Zamperla Endeavour model would be fantastic. And I think they could give it the Zodiac sci-fi-ish theme. Uh, or theme it more with the Lost City, with the likes of Vortex and Quantum. Things like that. Uh, so I'd like to see more of a Lost City theme with this ride. Uh, so again, maybe theme it to Colossus. Maybe it's like a, a hidden gem in the Lost City or something like that. So I th just, just a, a, a Lost City themed... Zamperla Endeavour. I think that'll be a great fit for the park. Moving in then to 2023. Now this, my friends, will be an off year in my opinion. Some just some paint ups, maybe some new events. Uh, and I think the new events will keep going. I think the new events are going to be a part of Thought Park now. Um, because I think Thought Park with their new resort side of things, I think they're becoming more of a, uh, a resort rather than just a theme park with 
uh, a beach area, to be honest, and coasters. So I think they are focusing on the family audience as well. Uh, so maybe like a new family ride, like a kids ride, maybe fit some in there with the old timber tugboat and the lumber jump. That'll be a few years old now, so you know, fit a new family ride in there, maybe update Rocky Express, or not remove it, of course, it's a classic attraction, but maybe like update Rocky Express or something. Uh, so it's like a little family ride or a little kids ride somewhere in the park. Uh, other than that, just like general paint ups and things like that. But this is the main thing about 2023. It's the start in the winter season. I'm going to see preparation for a 2025 investment, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Moving in then to 2024, and this, my friends, will be another off-year. Again, events, TLCs, paint-ups, etc. But the main thing about this season is, of course, main work for 2025. And, and, as a second thing, I think... Now, I've heard somewhere that the plans for this waterside hotel, this permanent hotel... Because uh, the Crash Pad slash Thorpe Shark Hotel was set to be temporary. And the actual planning expiry date for the permanent waterside hotel that's been talked about for a few years now. Apparently 2024 is the expiry date on those plans that we haven't heard anything from yet. So I think they could resubmit hotel plans and they'll get approved before the expiry date is reached. And I think we're going to see between the years of 2026, but most likely... 2027 or 2028 a permanent waterside hotel now you've got to look at past hotel accommodation investments in the merlin chain even even if it was before merlin you know uh, back when it was the two sword group alton towers invested in nemesis in 1994 and the alton towers hotel in 1996 just two years between the two uh, so I think that 2027 will be the first predicted date for the, for the permanent hotel on the site of the Thorpe Shark Hotel. 2028 uh, is sort of like a maximum for this prediction video, but it could be by 2030. You never know, but I think by the end of this decade we'll get the permanent hotel. But the planning expiry date we've heard is 2024 last time we heard, so... Uh, I do believe they'll resubmit plans for a waterside hotel. They'll get approved before the expiry date of the original plans. and uh, Or they may wait until the expiry date of those plans and resubmit them. Uh, and get it accepted for 2027, 2028, that kind of mark. I'm, so, I'm talking 2026 is maybe preparation work for the hotel. Uh, so that could be a guess. Uh, but I think by 2028, 2029 at, at best, we'll get a brand new permanent hotel at the park. Moving in then... Uh, to our last prediction, and that is 2025, and that is the opening of a brand new coaster at the park. It will have been 13 years since their last from scratch coaster, and that is the Swarm, uh, which is sitting uh, just in front of this new island for this new coaster. Uh, the last coaster work, any kind of coaster work, of course, will have been seven years ago with the X refurbishment into Walking Dead the Ride. Unless Saw's license ship has been removed by this point. If not, if it has, then it will have been just a few years since Lost Coaster worked. But if not, it'll be seven years since the X refurbishment and of course 13 years since their last new coaster. So I think a new coaster is needed by this point. I think they, they're working on the infrastructure of the park. They've got a brand new car parking system in place. They've got other things in place now. Uh, and they're gonna, I'm, I'm sure they're going to invest in other things to keep the park running as a resort rather than just a theme park with coasters and a beach. Uh, so they are improving in the infrastructure of the park. Other elements of the park before they invest in major new additions and stuff like that. So they are being careful with their investment, which some people may not be happy with. But in the long term, I'm sure it will be worth the wait. So I think that 2025 realistically will be the next year for Thorpe's major coaster. Now, I think the Alton Towers Secret Weapon 9 will open before Thorpe Park's coaster. I don't think it will be the same year. I think it could be the same year. It could be 2025. But I think Secret Weapon 9 at Alton Towers is coming 2024. And that's a bit of a hint, bit of a hint, as to what my uh, predictions are for the next five years at Alton Towers, which someone's requested. So uh, that video will be on in the future as well. But for 2025 at Thorpe Park, the year after I'm predicting Secret Weapon 9, I think it will be Thorpe Park's next major roller coaster. And there's three possible suggestions for this island behind the Swarm, which has been talked about for a number of years now as the next coaster site, as well as Logger's Leap, 
Uh, other sites have been talked about as well, but I think the island bef behind the swarm is the likely um, area, shall we say. Uh, so my three predictions, you can already see on your screen by now. Uh, an RMC iBox, so for those of you who don't know, top of track is where you replace, you rip out the old track, you put in the RMC track uh, with the same sort of structure work. You could do an iBox though, which is fully steel, or can be fully steel, and it's from scratch. Usually the iBoxes are from scratch, so that's usually the situation. An Intamin multi-launch, so like a Taran at Fantasia Land, or a Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Or what has been what I now I saw this on I saw this on numerous things videos threads anywhere like that rumors of a mini dive coaster by B and M and that was and though that was I spoke about as a strong rumor a couple of years ago I can't remember who said it at first on a forum or something I can't remember the name I'm really sorry uh, but whoever said it shout out to you uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and a couple of years ago, apparently that was a strong rumor, a massive B&M mini dive coaster. Uh, so, I, you know what? I could realistically see that on the site. So there we go. So, talking about these three coasters then, just to sort of sum up the video. Why I think each one may be good, which what, why I think it may not be good. Uh, RMC. Now, RMC has been the big meme among Thought Park fans for quite some time. Uh, and I do believe that Thought Park could invest in RMC. And I do believe that Rocky Mountain Construction could invest in a coaster, an iBox coaster. or a, I, I mean, I would have gone for a Raptor coaster, but I do believe that an iBox is better than a Raptor just due to the capacity. Unless they go with the T-Rex, which, you know, the T-Rex could be ready by 2023, 2024. So maybe they go in for that T-Rex for 2025. Um, but I know that RMC does want to sell off its Raptor models and build on the Raptor models as much as they can before they start investing in a T-Rex. And America, I think, will be the first to get a T-Rex unless we get a massive, massive surprise uh, and the UK adds the first one instead. I mean, I could have also gone for an SNS Axis coaster, uh, but I do believe that that will be more suited to Alton Towers, in my opinion. Uh, so, in my personal opinion, I think that an RMC iBox would work well. Uh, because it's twisty, it's turny, it can it can provide great airtime, you can walk underneath it. The only downside to me about this would be the how the structure would work. Now, obviously, it's not the biggest island compared to the Swarm Islands. So, uh, if they can work the coaster around the island, and they can work it into quite a, a shorter island layout compared to if you were working on it on the Swarm Island or on Logger's Leap site then obviously they'd, they'd find a way. Uh, but it would be very interesting to see what RMC do with that Swarm Island if they were to work on that island. Uh, Intamin Multi-Launch. Now they do have Stealth, which is a normal launch, but they haven't got a Multi-Launch like a Taran or a Pantheon. So I think that a Taran slash Pantheon type ride at Thought Park would work very, very well. But it comes back to that point as a negative, you know, it, they haven't they've already got a launch coaster in stealth so do they need another one even if it's multi-launch do they realistically need another one do they really uh and my answer would be maybe not even though a multi-launch would be great low to the ground very works well on the island i do think that one launch coaster could be enough for thought part to say we're not investing in another one until stealth's gone now the b&m mini dive coaster now like i said i can't remember who said it on the forum but shout out to you it was a strong rumor a couple of years ago. Nothing was said more about it after that. I know a couple of people would want to see a dive coaster at Thought Park still, though. I know people are still talking about it. Uh, but the reason why a B&M mini dive coaster would work well is because uh, it's one of the last remaining B&Ms that they haven't got. They've got an invert. They've got a wing, but they haven't got a dive. So I think that a dive would work. A hyper... Uh, that's that's pushing. That's pushing. Um, and a flyer, I think a flyer would be best suited for another park, maybe in the UK. But I think a flyer would be best suited somewhere else, maybe like a Gardaland or a Heidi Park. Somewhere else in the Merlin chain, since Alton Tower's already got one. Chessington's more of a family park, so they wouldn't work with a B&M flyer. I think Gardaland and Heidi Park would be the best fit for a B&M flyer, in my opinion. Uh, and not Chessington, Alton Tower, they've already got one. And Thought Park, in my opinion, wouldn't really benefit from a BM flyer. Unless they would. I mean, I won't put it past them. But I think that a mini dive coaster... So, when I say mini dive coaster, I don't mean like a mini layout. Uh, basically, the difference between a normal dive coaster and a mini dive coaster 
is the normal dive coaster, like Oblivion or Alton Towers, has got those massive widespread trains and the thick, thick track. The mini dive coaster has got thinner track and the trains aren't two rows massively long. It's three rows and it's shorter per row, but it means an extra car on the train. Uh, so that's what we mean by a mini dive coaster. You look at Crake at Heidi Park, Oblivion the Black Hole at Gardaland. Uh, so apart from Chessington, which is more of a family park, Thorpe Park is the only one now not to have a dive coaster. So it would be the perfect fit. And I think that a more outstretched layout, kind of like what they're doing with Oblivion the Black Hole, uh, what they did with Heidi Park's Crake to an extent, with the splashdown element as well. Uh, maybe not Oblivion cause, at the original Alton Towers, because that's only like a drop a turn through to the station. Uh, but they could, if they wanted to, remove Enterprise, remove the Submission Memorial Garden, remove Oblivion, and you know, f you know, go through that hole again and create a new Oblivion layout. Uh, but I think Thought Park is the last park in the Merlin chain that would really need a dive coaster or get a dive coaster. So I think that a dive coaster at Thought Park and Mini Dive. Uh, with a couple of inversions here and there, two, three, maybe even four inversions that can fit them in. Uh, theme it to something new, maybe theme it as a new uh, sort of natural disaster or something wrong with the world because we love dark themed coasters in the UK. <laughs> um, just don't theme it to Fortnite, please, please, please don't theme it to Fortnite. Uh, and um, yeah, I think that a dive coaster would be the most logistical out of the three. I think that an RMC would be great. But would it work on a different site rather than this one? An Intamin multi-launch, again, I'll go back to that point. They'll think we've got stealth, we don't need another one, even though they do need a multi-launch to sort of fill the void of what's going wrong with a single launch. So I think that another launch coaster would work, but again, it falls back on that argument of we've got stealth, we don't need another launch coaster, even though we've got a singular launch, we don't need a multi-launch. A dive coaster is the last major BNM. So I think that once the financial situation of the country gets back underway uh, in a few years, uh, if it does get back to normal, hopefully it does, fingers crossed, uh, I do believe that Thought Park could invest in a B&M dive. If not, then I would go with the RMC personally, and then the Intamin launch is third choice. Uh, so there we go. So that is my next five predictions at Thought Park Resort for the next five years. Um, so in those five years, it's mainly off years, a couple of family thrill rides, um, obviously the permission for the hotel development, new events, and a coaster. So, you know, all in all, it wouldn't be a bad five years. It'd be a realistic five years, wouldn't it? It's mainly events, off years, uh, just a couple of family rides here and there, family thrill rides here and there, and a coaster at the end of that last five years, next five years. Uh, so... There we go. So that is this next five years prediction video at Thorpe Park. Uh, big thank you once again to B-Boy JD10 for requesting this video. If you want a shout out or if you want to request a video and get a shout out in there, please comment down below. Request more of these five year prediction videos because I really, 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 really want to do more. Uh, I've got loads that people have commented. I've got Lightwater Valley. I've got Poulton's Park. I've got Fantasy Island. I've got Alton Towers. If you've got any European parks, America parks, any parks in the world, Hersham Family Entertainment's parks was mentioned, so I may do that. Uh, Mid Merlin Midway attractions like Dungeons, Sea Life, Man Two Swords, they were requested, so I'll try and get a video out on them. Uh, so loads of video suggestions coming in. I am going to do some fact files for rides and coasters Someone has already suggested a mountain alpine coaster that I want to look into so uh, That video will come out in the near future Hopefully but if you've got any more suggestions on fact files then please comment down below Remember though the fact file series is only for rides. I have not yet done uh, So there we go so thank you very much guys for watching this prediction video. I'll see you tomorrow for more theme park content. And for now guys, please like, comment, subscribe. And for now guys, my name is Coach Chow. Keep in the coast life. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care guys. Have an awesome day.